It's a joy again this morning to be in church. Though it is empty, I just have my cameraman here with me today, Jason. And together, we're going to present to you this morning's message. The message is, bring it empty. So many of us are full, yet empty. We're full of the wrong stuff and empty of the good ones. Sometimes we dread the fullness that we have. Maybe you're one of them that are full of ang anguish, maybe full of pain, maybe full of sorrow, full of anxiety, maybe full of fear. Right now, fear seems to grip the hearts of so many people. Fear of the coronavirus, the Delta version that is creeping into our lands and claiming the lives of so many. And there is the sphere of infection, the fear of going to hospital, the fear of not recovering, the fear of death. And seeing what is happening around and so many being infested and affected, uh, many fear, or shall I say, many are full of fear. And then again, we have uncertainty. Many are full of uncertainty. Many are full of concerns. Concerns about so many things in life. Concerns about other members in the family. Maybe some have become a little delinquent. And so there is all of these concerns. So as we look around, many are full. Full of all of these issues, full of all of these problems. Full but empty. Jesus wants you full of the full that will keep you full. There are some things that we need to be full of. We need to be full of faith. We need to be full of confidence. We need to be full of power. We need to be full of strength. We need to be full of focus. We need to be full of determination. We need to be full of God. I like what Psalms 139 Verse 5 and 6 tells us, it says, You edge me behind and before. You have laid your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me and lofty for me to attain, to grasp. You know what? In other words, the scripture is saying that God has hedged you. God has brought you. You are now called. And he has his hands upon you. You selected and you secluded for kingly honor. God wants to touch you today. That's what he has in mind, to touch you today. And those that have been touched by God, have seen the transformation. They've seen the change. They've seen the miracle. And maybe that is what you need today, a special touch from God. God is wanting to touch you, is wanting to bless you, is wanting to empower you, is wanting to deliver you, is wanting to heal you, is wanting to revive you, is wanting to enlighten you. Are these the things that you want to be full of? Well, here's an opportunity to turn to him. Look to him. Because he is still the giver of all good gifts. Further to that, he wants to promote you. He wants to guide you. He wants to protect you. He wants to uplift you. We have a God that's concerned about our welfare. 
We have a God that wants the best for us. And he wants to do these things if we lean on him, if we look to him, if we call him, if we draw his attention, then we can have all of these things and much more. We're going to this morning read a portion of scripture that's recorded in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 1 and following. This is what it says. A certain woman of the wives of the son of the prophet cried out to Elisha saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditors is coming to take away my sons to be slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the fuller ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel so the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons live on the rest. Yeah, we have an interesting story of a lady that was in predicament. She had a financial problem. The Breadwinner, her husband, had passed on. And together with that, all income has ceased. The bills were piling up. And the creditors were knocking at a door. And there was a ruling in those days, according to Exodus 21 2, that the children of the house can be taken and used as slaves for a period of seven years to pay off the debt. So this lady was worried because the creditor was wanting to come and take her two sons away, away from her to be slaves, to pay off that debt. So she did what she thought she should. She went to the household of faith. She went to the man of God Elisha himself. He was a reputable prophet. She had heard much about him. She had heard about his miraculous works and miraculous deeds. And she knew in her heart that that's where her help lied. So often when we caught in predicaments and problems and issues and situations and storms, we tend to run to everybody else but to the main source, which is God himself, channeled through his vessels. The woman went to Elisha and said, Elisha, I got a problem. This is my problem. So what Elisha did was he asked her, tell me, what have you got? She said, my house is empty. Perhaps she had sold everything to try and pay off little by little the credit that she had. And she said, I have nothing in the house but a jar of oil. So Elisha said, you now do this. You go and you borrow empty vessels containers from all your neighbors near and far 
You bring them in. And then you shut the door. And you pour into those vessels. The oil that you have in the jar. So this was the instruction to the lady. And she had enough faith in her to believe that God was in the business. She had enough faith to believe that this was going to be a breakthrough. That a turnaround was going to come. And so she became obedient in that she herself and her sons went on a borrowing spree. Now, when you go borrowing, it isn't easy. You know that you normally start with the small things. When you're poor, you start with the small things. You knock on the neighbor's door and you ask, can we have a little salt? Or can we have a onion or two? Maybe some tomatoes or potatoes. Maybe a little chili. And in the beginning, we find that neighbors will readily help you because they see you in a dire strait. And as time goes on, we find that those things change as neighbors become reluctant and they look at you as a pest because the borrowing seems to be ongoing and they know that they you will never have a be in a position to be able to pay back or give back that which you've taken. I recall some things in my early life when I was just a little boy. My mom was there at the communal chap in North Dean, where quite a few families came and took water from the tap. And the conversation went such that the neighbor soon realized that being Saturday, there was no meat in our house. And she decided to give a little help in hand. She told my mom if she can send me along with the container, she will give us some meat. It was customary in those days that at least on a Saturday you had meat. It was difficult for the weekdays, but somehow the families managed to put something together to have meat on a Saturday. And so with no meat for us on a Saturday was a tough call. So my mom sent me with a little cup and she said I needed to go to my neighbor's house and they will give me some meat. Now, I was not allowed to enter into the neighbor's house. Uh, in those days, there were different stations in life, you know, we were not only poor, but we were also culturally on a lower level. We were plays and the family that I went to was an idol. They were on a higher plane socially. And uh, there were lots of restrictions in those days and thank God it is no more. Not only were we not allowed to enter into the house, we were not allowed to touch anything that they owned. So there I stood on the outside of the door and the lady came in with some meat and she raised that bowl above my cup. She couldn't, I was not allowed to touch her cup or my cup was not allowed to touch her container. And she poured the meat into that little cup and I recall some of the pieces of meat falling on the ground. I excitedly took and blew off the dust, put it in the cup and ran home because here was meat for the day. When you poor, when you go borrowing, you suddenly understand that you become a pest really to some people. 
I can imagine these boys, two boys, constantly going and knocking at the door of neighbors and asking for stuff because they had nothing at all to eat for the day. And some neighbors will give, some neighbors will reluctantly refuse, some neighbors won't open doors. And so these boys and together with the mother were back on a borrowing spree. They were knocking at the doors and they said, we are here, please. I can imagine the reluctance of some when they saw the boys. They thought, well, these boys are out to borrow again. I wonder what it is this time. What well, is it some mealy meal? Is it going to be salt again? Is it going to be some oil? What is it going to be this time? But the boys went on a different mission. Their call was so much different from what they were accustomed to. And as they knocked the doors, they said, Mama said, please give us containers. Mama said, please give us as much containers as you can. Mama said, please let it be empty. And I can imagine the sudden change in the attitudes of the neighbors. They wanted to give something in the container. But the boy said, no, we want it empty. We want nothing there. Mama said we must get empty containers. And so they went from door to door, knocking, getting all the containers they could get. And the boys were brave in saying, never mind what the containers contained before. Never mind what was in those vessels before. Never mind what still remains in the vessels now. We want empty. We want it all empty. Give us empty vessels. And they collected these empty vessels. And they brought it to Mama. They brought a lot of vessels to Mama. The mother looked at these boys being so fervent in their efforts as the containers came. They came in all shapes. They came in all sizes. They came in different colors, but they came and they all came in empty. The mother insisted the containers be empty. They had to be empty. And so it came. Then all of them got in the room and they shut the door. It was a miraculous process that was in progress. They had to shut the door. They had to keep the curious out of the way. They had to keep the inquisitive behind the door. And so Mama and the boys brought the containers to the jar of oil. Mama must have prayed and said, God, thank you. Thank you for what we know is going to happen. Thank you. And she raised the jar and she started pouring into those containers. As she poured the one container and it became full, the lady decided and they started filling the next container and the next one and the next one and the next one. And the oil never ran out out of that jar that she had. And they kept pouring and pouring and pouring. Finally, the time came when there were no more vessels. And mother asked the boys, is there any more vessels that I could fill? And the boy said, you fill the last one. There's no more vessels. And as soon as the last one was filled, 
And as long as there was no more filling to be done, the measure of oil suddenly ceased. So mother, with all these containers of oil in a house, excitedly ran to the prophet. And she said, prophet, it got done. We experienced it. The oil never ran out. We filled all these jars. We got it there. And the prophet said, well, mother, you go now. Sell the oil. Pay off your creditors first. And then whatever remains, you live off that. You and your sons will be well. We have here a story of how God assisted a widow woman. And we have here a story indicating how God is looking for persons that he could assist. And maybe right now you're looking for some big time help. Maybe right now you feel empty. Well, if you feel empty, that's okay. But I want you to be empty today because that is the condition we need to be to have the fullness of God. Sometimes we come to God, but we come to Him in the wrong position. The position that God requires us to be is an empty position. We come to him half full. We come to him partly full. We come to him perhaps three quarter full. And what are we full of? So often we full of ourselves. So often we full of pride. So often we full of the cares of the world. So often we're full of troubles that are constantly troubling us. And we so don't have the ability to give him our everything. Jesus made a few profound statements. And one of them was this. He said, if anyone wants to come after him, they need to deny the Themselves, deny themselves. I like to think today that denying yourself meaning means emptying yourself. Meaning removing all of those hindrances that stand in the way. You see, if you are full, then we can't fill you any further. You need to be empty so that you can have the full. What are you full of right now? Well, whatever it is, I would suggest that you do a cleaning up, that you do a emptying so that God can fill you with the right spirit. God, Holy Spirit, is the right spirit that we need to have. And if we have the Holy Spirit, you have empowerment for the day, encouragement for the day, boldness for the day, equipping for the day to help you along your way. God is waiting to fill us all with his power. We need to have the right kind of spirit. We need to have a kind spirit. We need to have a catcher spirit. We need to have a considerate spirit. We need to have a living, a loving spirit. We need to have an honest spirit, a respectable spirit, accountable spirit, a helpful spirit, a willing spirit. These are the kind of spirits that we need to have. A thankful spirit, an uplifting spirit, an encouraging spirit, a zealous spirit. Now these spirits come from the spirit of God. And God is willing to come 
and God is willing to fill, and God is willing to ensure that we have a better day. Most to most people, instead of being better, they become bitter. And they become bitter by harboring the spirit that is not the correct one. You can have a stubborn spirit or a disobedient spirit. You can have a lazy spirit or a jealous spirit or a shrewd spirit. You can have a selfish spirit or undermining spirit, a gossiping spirit, a discouraging spirit, a negative spirit. You know that all of these spirits are destined to bring you down, keep you down, stop you from moving up, stop you from getting what God is wanting you to have today and always. The instructions to the lady was this, bring it empty, bring it empty. And that's what she did. She brought it empty. When she looked at the containers, and most containers probably indicated what was there before, And right now, we are like containers, like vessels that God is wanting to fill. Maybe as we look at ourselves and others look at us, maybe our lives have been disturbing, maybe frightening, maybe embarrassing, because of what we were full of before. Maybe it has been an embarrassment to many and maybe to yourself and to your family. Maybe that is the kind of vessel you have been and maybe still are, you still are at this moment. I want you to know today that God is still in the pouring business. That God still wants to pour out of himself to everyone. And you can have a measure of that power today as God goes about looking for vessels to fill. You can turn to him and you can say, God, I want to be empty. I want to be empty of all of the wrong stuff. I want to be empty of all of the wrong spirits. I want to be empty of all of the wrong thinking. I want to be empty of all of the wrong ways. Empty me, Lord. And as soon as you become empty of all of those things, you can turn around and say, now fill me. Yes, my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Fill me, Lord. And God will fill you with the oil from heaven. He will fill you. He will drench you. He will saturate you. And it will start falling from your head all the way down. And the anointing will shift you into new things. The anointing will break the yoke of bondage. That's what the anointing is destined to do. It will break the yoke of bondage. Maybe you are bound by wrong thinking. Maybe you are bound by wrong habits. Maybe you are bound by wrong ways. Maybe you are bound because of wrong company. But the anointing will break the yoke. The main anointing will break every chain. The anointing will shift you into a different position. The anointing will pick you up from where you are. We're thankful in that God is a upper taker. We have the undertaker and he's a frightful fellow. And none of us want to fall into his hands. But God is not the undertaker. God is the upper taker. He's wanting to come and pick us up from where we are. He's wanting to reach down and touch us, rejuvenate us, refresh us, revive us, revitalize us. He's wanting to do all of these great things even now. And God is wanting to start it by pouring into our hearts. Like I mentioned a little earlier, you can say it again. 
Yes, my cup, Lord. It's empty, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and pour. Come and pour. Lord, here's my cup. Come and pour. I don't want to be empty anymore. I don't want to be empty anymore. My Father, I don't want to be empty anymore. Please fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Won't you bow your head in prayer with me? Father, we thank you for the provision that you've made even through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And through the medium of the blessed Holy Spirit, I pray that the Spirit will be evident even now, Lord, as we turn our hearts to Thee. May we experience a fruit from heaven, Lord, that will shift us into new positions. We're tired of being empty, tired of being weak, tired of being fe fearful. We're tired of being frightened. We've tired of being uncertain. Father, we want a shift in our position. We want a shift in our thinking. We want a shift in our walk. We want a shift in our lives. You know the way because you are the way. Take us by our hand and teach us that way. May your word, Lord, go forth and touch our hearts and make us understand that you're still looking, O oh God. As the boys went searching for empty vessels, you are still searching, O God, for vessels that can become empty so that they can be filled by your spirit and by your power. It is by that filling, Lord, it is by that pouring of God that they can become changes in our lives. May we experience that, O God, and may the anointing become fresh in our hearts so that, Lord, every bondage can be broken. And all of us be set free. For this we ask in Jesus' sweet name. Amen and amen. God bless you, church.